<laughs> Hi, Sergei. Uh, you're one of the best known Frizz teachers worldwide. Um, what would interest, you, uh, interest me is uh, you as a Triss master, how did you have your first contact with Triss? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, well, um, after uh, graduating, from, graduating from the university, I worked for a pretty large R&D organization and like any R&D, um, had a lot of uh, patenting activities, research and patenting. So um, I was pretty much involved in uh, uh, inventing and uh, pretty soon uh, applied to, for several, submitted several patent applications. Um, uh, in the Soviet Union, uh, there was a pretty interesting uh, support system. Uh, if uh, engineers needed something for their job, uh, the organization could actually send them to uh, obtain uh, an additional degree at the expense of the company. And because uh, I spent quite a lot of time writing patent applications, the head of the patent department asked me if I uh, would be interested in obtaining uh, a degree in patent law. Um, the subject interested me a lot and uh, I agreed. Another reason uh, that uh, pushed me to uh, agree, it was because uh, I got one three day a week and one month of extra vacation. So that sounded very attractive to me. So I thought for two years to get a master degree in patent law with all these, uh, all those uh, conditions would be nice. And one of the subjects that um, uh, that master degree required was different methods of design. That's where first I read about TRIZ and it really stood out in comparison to all other uh, methods of design. So I started reading more. There were a number of books by Al Schuller. Uh, so I got involved, got interested more and more and in one of the books that I found in the library there was an advertisement about TRIZ workshops conducted by Al Schuller with specific dates and places. So I signed up for this workshop. Now, uh, that was my first Al Shores workshop that lasted for two weeks um, because I had pretty good relationship with my bosses. Um, they allowed me to go there, can you imagine, a training course for two weeks. Um, so I went there to learn more about Triz and I came back home with uh, full of decision to quit my job and to do only Triz because all other things seemed uh, very unimportant and trivial, and Triz was like a shining star in the sky. Um, well, probably fortunately my family didn't allow me to do that. Uh, but uh, um, I started basically hunting uh, the workshops that I'll show conducted all over the country. So uh, in different cities and every, in different places of different topics, different types of workshops, uh, once it was announced I was there. So at some point in time, I'll sure notice because you know the same face at every workshop he conducted. So that's when he asked me if uh, uh, I would be interested to kind of uh, participate in his development, and he started writing me letters with assignments, and that's how uh, the whole thing started. Okay, thank you. Now after those years and years of Tris studying, then and now Tris teaching. Uh, right now, what is your favorite Tris tool that you have? Um, it does uh, change with time. Uh, during Old Schuller's time, when Tris was uh, basically problem solving tools, uh, my favorite tool was uh, a system of standard inventive solutions. I know it is not perfect, but uh, I really liked it logic. its logic. Uh, but later, when uh, Triz expanded to the analytical part, you know, uh, because uh, I'm sure that now everyone knows that the most important thing is to identify what problem we want to address. Um, uh, and uh, the analytical part is much more predominant and important in the whole innovation project. My favorite tools became uh, functionality and trimming. You know, those, to my mind, are crown jewels uh, of uh, modern Triz. 
um, yeah, probably function analysis and trimming because they go hand in hand. Okay, then uh, now some more in the in the practical area. Um, most people ask me then, uh, where was Tris applied? What was good? applicants of, of, of Tris, which uh, products came from that Tris. So you have now years and years of, of applying Tris in, in companies, you saw them apply to different projects and processes. What is your best application that you can think of? Um, well, there are two folded kind of answer. If we talk about uh, the methodology, uh, my soft spot is, uh, um, you know, using trees for different pattern strategies because that's uh, kind of how I started research. That's where uh, probably the most practical results obtained by me personally. So as for the methodology, that is my favorite um, trees application for uh, patterns or convention, for strengthening patterns, and so on. Um, as for um, uh, if we look, uh, if we talk about application of trees within corporations, I also have two favorites um, that I had through all my trees practice. The first favorite, and I still uh, have this love in my heart, was Procter and Gamble, because that's the first um, multinational corporation that really made trees a part of its engineering culture. It took a number of years, about four years, to deploy TRIZ in several businesses, Procter & Gamble, thousands of people have been trained, and uh, you can see the products um, that came from those uh, TRIZ projects on the shelves. We use them, we eat them, um, so that is my first love, uh, Procter & Gamble. And the second unique uh, program, several programs that I had, it's probably because of the dedication and of uh, internal um, uh, corporate philosophy that was with a company called uh, Hyundai Motors. Um, everyone knows that Korea was and probably still is the most risk uh, company in the world, South Korea, because all major corporations, they are Samsung, LG, Hyundai, POSCO, they have internalized risks pretty successfully. But unlike other Korean companies, Hyundai uh, decided to uh, enable their own engineers to do and use trees uh, from the very beginning. Samsung and LG and some other companies, they uh, chose a way of inviting Russian experts and observing how those experts operate. Hyundai uh, uh, Motor was much more aggressive. No outside experts, their own engineers had to learn and do it on the real projects. And um, that the um, aggressiveness of the approach, in the good sense, was really amazing. Um, uh, during the first program, uh, uh, the uh, group generated was level one, two, and three training the result was more than 80 patterns the second program the second year was more than 120 patterns all in all roi of those two years exceeded 200 million dollars and suffice it to say that hyundai a motor the patent only things that either go to production or are strategically important they do not patent things just for the sake of patenting they have very limited budget for that 1000 patents a year that's why they have very, very strict and thorough selection of what they patent. And such uh, an extensive patenting of three solutions the company generated and implemented in the car uh, really um, you know, was amazing. So my second love was Hyundai Motors. So thank you also for the very nice interview and all those insights in your tourist life. Thank you. Thank you.